YouTubians, Gary, VW Jawbreaker. Welcome back to part two of the DIY lightweight overland camping trailer build, but it's not really an overlander. It's a lightweight DIY little camper trailer build that we're doing. Let me bring you up the speed. We started with a, I don't know what year, an old Coleman Versa trailer that is pretty lightweight. We removed the fiberglass top. We built this entire frame structure so we could raise the sides up, have more storage inside. Rooftop tent on top, all the fixings. So off camera, we finished all the bracing. We got it painted and I went ahead and tacked in little mounting points for this aluminum sign. So this is an old aluminum sign I had laying around and this is where we're gonna eventually mount all of our electronics. This is just trying to get things a little bit easier access done right now. Same with the little battery box. Don't judge, I'll explain later. So this is just some washers and some riv nuts that I used. Tack the washers in place. I did not want to drill into the three quarter inch structure. So that's why I did it that way. This just bolts off and on nice and easy. So what is the next step? Well, next step's real simple. We need to go ahead and get this entire structure lined with aluminum Get that closed in so we can start on the roof rack, be able to set the rooftop tent on. Now, if you remember back when we built this, I wanted this entire thing to be just under 24 inches, so our inside height was about 36. Now, if you look here, we are right about 23 and three quarters, which gives us a nice little quarter inch buffer zone, so we should be a-okay. Basically, enough jibber jabber. Let's get to building this thing, and let's get this thing going. all right well this is 032 thick aluminum and as you saw we cut it to size i left it a little long front and back we scuffed it and then hit it with uh, wax and grease remover. I hit this with wax and grease remover so everything is clean. But what we're going to do is a little something a little unconventional, but it works. Is we're going to use this 3M VHB tape. You can get this Amazon or whatever, and I'll do my best to link a lot of this stuff down below in the video description. So we're going to use that as a phase one of adhesion to the trailer. Second phase is we're going to use probably some seam sealer or something of that nature and run it in here along all the corners and stuff just so it's good and adhered. A lot of the times when people build these um, teardrop type trailers and whatnot, that's all they use is like construction adhesive and stick it in place. I have watched some videos and done some research where they use this style tape and that's it. So if we do both, we're definitely good. And that was the reason of sanding is so we have a nice, good, strong mechanical bond. So that's it. Let's get this thing attached and I'll show you the next uh, phase.
one side down, one side to go. So it's just a matter of finding the right bit. Make it slightly oversized, that way everything, you can trim it exactly the way you need it. Now unfortunately, this thing has seen its better days. I'm fighting this more than I'm fighting the bit, but it's also good to find yourself a good carbide bit. And that, that's that. So I'm not gonna bore you with the other side. So we'll go ahead and knock that out and I'll bring you back. Why well, ain't that some crap? Waiting on Amazon. We got the front one cut out, ready to go. Uh, got it bent around. Again, this is 032, so it bends pretty easy. Just put a straight edge along here to help keep this from trying to bow out weird. So once we get it kind of taped in place, I'll go ahead and redo these corners. And this just helps seal it. And again, there's gonna be a trim piece going down anyway, so you won't see that. Just extra reassurance. And then, Again, since we're waiting on Amazon, I figured, ooh, let's go ahead and cut the top piece and get that done. So when Amazon gets here, we can just put it all together. But hold on a second. There's always a problem. Problems always occur. It's how you overcome your problems that matter. So let me show you. That is a four by eight sheet of aluminum, which they sell in like four by eight sheets, four by 10 sheets, yada, yada, yada. Again, four foot is the main width. Let's measure something, shall we? So, if we go from that side to this side, where's our 48 inch mark? Yep, it's over there. Yeah, and it's more than four foot long because, well, that's almost six foot long. So the only option we have is to be wasteful with that sheet. We're gonna have to cut it to fit this way, go from the front to here, uh, back side of this brace, and then the other sheet will actually slide underneath by about an inch, inch and a half, and then go back. And that way there'll be a seam here in the middle where the cross brace is, and as you're driving down the road, this sheet will be underneath this sheet so water will flow over. More cutting more hoopla but let's get to it who spotted that problem before i cut this if you did i owe you a cookie that will work nicely it really will so we'll still have the cross price there the other piece will come under, slip underneath. Again, that way when airflow, water, when you're driving, whatever, it will go that way. However, that piece is larger than that piece because why? We were more than halfway. If that was a four by 10 sheet, that would have worked. Guess what I didn't get? A four by 10 sheet. Why? Because it doesn't fit in the work van. So I have two options. <laughs> we can continue to wait on Amazon um, and at least get the front done. And we can go ahead and seal and pop rivet this in place. At least get that done. I need to go ahead and call the metal, metal manufacturing place locally and see if they can get me another sheet. And how long that's gonna take. It's gonna take a while. We may have to do this a little ghetto and may have to do one sheet, one sheet, with a seam down the center. I'd rather not do that, but it's gonna save me a few bucks if I do it that way. 
but it would look nicer if we did it the other way if i can get another sheet hmm hmm i don't know i honestly do not know i got some things to do to see which way i want to do this i want to get another sheet but if they're going to be a week it's not going to work don't think they're closed just yet let me give them a quick call she's usually really good about getting me an answer like pronto so let me give her a call real quick i think they close in like five minutes Would you look at that? It's on. Well, bam. Be able to get right in, do what I need to do. And this actually has a weatherproof seal on it. And then that was some butyl tape that they use for, well, really all kinds of things. So that's gonna be nice and solid, nice and sealed. And then I drilled it out with a 3 16 drill bit, put it in with some 3 16 blind rivets so it's on there it's solid and what i'll probably do also is maybe do a i don't know i might seal it on the inside i might just leave it i don't know all right now for the top and as you saw i don't know if i showed it i don't know did i record that or not it was going to be like a week and a half so we're doing the rear in two sections it is what it is let's get a crack the lacking and get this crack finished up i didn't quite go as anticipated but kind of on a time crunch so it's just gonna have to be good enough i don't like it but it is what it is so got a slight lip but again everything will come back what i'll do is i'll tape this off and run seam sealer in there as well so i did put the butyl tape in the seam so that's all nice and solid you wondered why i put those two little led lights up front That's why. That one there, one there, it's easy enough to look in and look at my electronics and look at the front stuff. Oh, the other ones? Hold on, I'll show you. All right, so imagine it's dark out and you would need to look in there and find something. Little switch right here, little toggle switch. Boom. That is nice. Plenty of light to be able to see what you're doing get stuff out at night look for stuff at night whatever so again trying to think ahead on some of these things and make life a little easier a lot of those led lights i got from a good buddy of mine aaron so they're just leftovers from doing underglow lights on the 60. so thanks to aaron we got some cool interior lights so next up it's getting late so I'm kind of done for right now but next up we need to go ahead and start on the crossbar assembly once the crossbars are in place we can move on so let's get to building that next
Well, I didn't bother recording all that because, well, you've seen me weld before. Really no point in fully welding the whole thing out. So this right here is quarter wall. This is, I believe, eighth, which is more than strong enough to support what we're doing here. But these corners were beveled at an angle so I could get a stronger pass in everywhere. So I did a quick root pass. Then I went back and did a little hotter pass to fill it all in. So we did that to all four sides and really the only welds I dressed were right here just a little bit to kind of help smooth that transition out. Other than that, I'm not grinding them down. Now I have not decided if I want to do some kind of triangular brace right here. I haven't really decided. I know it's probably overkill, but if you know me and know, know the way I build things, pretty much everything's overkill because I'd rather do it all right now than have to modify things later. Highly doubt we're going to need the braces. I mean, this thing is going to be stout. Um, I looked underneath on the angle, lots of penetration through, so we're good there. I think we'll just go ahead and prime and paint it and go ahead and get it reinstalled. One thing that I did do, didn't think this through too well beforehand, but those plates that are inside that we bolted the angle to, well, you got to get way up in there in order to have somebody run the bolt on the outside and somebody run the nut on the inside. So I did that, then drug the welder in there and went ahead and tacked the nuts in place on like three corners. That way you can just run the bolt in and out from the outside and not have to ever get inside to take it off. I don't ever plan on taking it off, but it's a possible. It's possible. It's it's next. I'm going to go ahead and get that prime and painted. Then we'll go ahead and get this bolted on for good. I'm thinking I may go ahead and scuff and prime the top so that's done. And I don't have to... Let's prime that first and then we'll see if we have enough to get this primed. Let's do that. All right, there we go. It is, it's on there. So I ended up running a bead of silicone down this channel so it helps seal everything up even though I did seam seal everything. So all the seams are seam sealed. And then I found some little plastic caps off Amazon and threw those on there. I think it looks pretty good. So as you can see, seam sealed. All right, guys, well, this video is getting kind of long, so I think we'll go ahead and put a pin in it here. Plus, the weather kind of took a uh, turn for the worse. It's uh, raining and we got a bad storm coming. So it's gonna be kind of hard to continue on today. Plus this video, like I said, it, it's long enough. So next video, we're gonna get that rooftop tent unboxed, get it assembled, get it plopped onto here, set it up and see if this thing flips over or not. Uh, somebody said that they don't think it's gonna work. I think it'll work. There's always that little bit of doubt in the back of the mind. So we'll, uh, I guess we'll find out together. We'll set the camera up and see if it flips over. I don't know, that should be fun. So guys, thanks so much for being here. Be kind to one another. Until the next time, be good.